Here at Farnborough, we talk a lot about air breathing engines. It's the staple of the industry after all. Rolls-Royce, for example, is uh, one of the better known names in the industry. And it's here at the show advertising its new initiatives such as the intelligent engine and obviously products like the XWB, the Advance and the Ultrafan. Looking even further into the future, there's a company called Reaction Engines, which Rolls-Royce is one of the investors in. They're looking at trying to bring technology which will enable access to space and hypersonic flight using a new innovative engine concept. They're causing excitement on both sides of the Atlantic, and uh, it's a very interesting technology which is causing a lot of interest. So let's go and have a look at them. Well, I'm with Mark Thomas, uh, CEO of Reaction Engines. And uh, Mark, obviously it's uh, a very hectic show here. Thanks very much for sparing some time to talk to us. Could you uh, give us a little flavor of where you are at the moment with preparations to test the, uh, the basis of the, uh, the Sabre engine? Yeah, sure. Um, well, as you know, Guy, the, uh, the Sabre engine has two unique features. One is its uh, pre-cooler that cools air down from 1,000 degrees centigrade to zero in a fraction of a second, and the other is its unique thermodynamic cycle. So both of those elements we plan to demonstrate separately, the first being the pre-cooler, I will put that through a hypersonic test campaign this year in Colorado, so that's a big deal. Uh, we've uh, finished completing build of our test facility and we'll push the button on that test uh, later in the year. And then the thermodynamic cycle itself will put through its paces here in the UK starting from 2020. And of course the uh, interest in the whole concept of the, the Sabre engine uh, has spread to many sort of potential applications ranging from hypersonic vehicles to space access. Could you sort of um, perhaps describe how different elements of the, uh, the Sabre concept would fit different concepts? Yeah, sure. So, so Sabre, Sabre is, a, is a unique class of engine because it's truly versatile and it spans uh, everything from uh, low speed to extremely high speed and potentially uh, speeds that enable orbital, orbital access. So it really is the only device that can uh, do that job uh, efficiently, because obviously with a rocket engine you can cover a wide speed range, but it's, it's not an efficient device. So we envisage it having a, a role in enabling hypersonic air vehicles, you know, uh, initially, I guess, military or defense uh, products, but down the road, uh, you know, potentially we'll see commercial hypersonics, which is a hugely challenging undertaking, but quite feasible and something that Boeing are studying at, at the moment, which is really exciting. And then uh, for space, it's about low-cost, responsive, resilient space access. You know, truly uh, reusable devices that you can use over and over again, hundreds and hundreds of times, and, and, and sort of more routine access to space, uh, uh, horizontal takeoff and landing, most likely. And of course, I suppose my last question here is to do with the main challenges involved. Um, the pre-cooler itself, the supercooler, as you mentioned, uh, that's that's a bit of an industry game changer potentially, isn't it? If you the various applications come to uh, fruition. Yeah, so the, so the pre-cooler we see is really a disruptive technology. I mean, it's the world's most efficient, most powerful, and lightest weight, ultra lightweight uh, heat exchanger. So and undoubtedly has applications far beyond the Sabre engine. And yeah, when leading a business like Reaction Engines, I have to explore those other opportunities. You know, I'm compelled to look for those uh, other outlets for the technology. So we have a big push on commercialization of the pre-cooler technology across automotive, energy, marine, and, and other, other industries, which is, again, an exciting feature of our business that's perhaps less known about to the outside world. Okay, well, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. So here is the Sabre engine, which allows the aircraft to fly from zero speed on the ground from a runway at a, 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 from the start all the way to speeds above Mark 20. From Mark zero to Mark 5, uh, the aircraft will use this air breathing mode. From Mark 5 onwards, it will use onboard oxygen, uh, liquid oxygen, which would be mixed with liquid hydrogen to power the rocket. So let's just have a look at how this works. Air will be brought in just like a jet engine, but unlike a jet engine, which would then pass this air through a compressor, the air is brought first through this pre-cooler, a heat exchanger, which then feeds this air down into this compressor and back through the engine to the rocket. In the meantime, you have a, a helium loop which passes through the, through the pre-cooler, enabling the air to be dropped down in temperature dramatically 
without causing frost to form and therefore block this area. The helium loop also turns this turbine, which in effect keeps this cycle running. This then feeds air through to be burnt with hydrogen in the rocket. So the key here is the fact that you've got basically two engines in one. The, uh, the pre-cooled air, which is the fuel with the hydrogen for the initial stages, and then switching to a rocket engine for Mark V onwards for, the, for either hypersonic flight, in the case of some air breathing cycles, or combined with a rocket all the way to orbit for a rocket flight. So two engines in one, all thanks to this thing here, the pre-cooler. So there you have it, a glimpse perhaps into the future of air breathing propulsion, at least in one form, and uh, perhaps something that one day we'll see here at the, uh, in the skies over Farnborough.